This music is just so incredibly. Don't question what. Don't question what. You know how you know how I am. This is what we do here. Get used to it. This the music. Oh, whoops. Okay. Yep. Okay, got a new joke star. Look at those luscious lips. Leave Joseph alone. No, I actually love Joseph. Like he's one of my favorites. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, sorry. It's so loud for me about preferences. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, that's so much better. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm not even going to talk about the fact that they all seem to be the same age when they take place in different centuries, even. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm just here to enjoy it. I love J the Joe Stars. I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Don't tell anybody I didn't watch part six or I didn't finish it. Um, it's okay. I still know all the characters. I still love them. Joseph is still my favorite. Jotaro is very close second. All right, and with that, let's begin. Oh, snap. Dot, dot, dot. As I walk up the slope, I'm trying not to drag my feet. Students wearing the same uniform are walking along the same incline, split into little groups and talking animatedly, even though it's so early in the morning. Why the hell are they so happy? The school has one of the worst reputations in the whole city. What is this? Johnny first, Joseph second, Josuke the... Mm. I'll take that as your opinion and move on, because it is definitely not a fact. But I guess it takes a special kind of person to come to a school like this. The kind of person who doesn't care they're going to be a school designed especially for delinquents. Or maybe I'm just grumpy. Mornings aren't my thing. The right opinion. No, your opinion's not right. I kick a rock along with me, going as far as to veer on my path when I kick it too far out of the way. All these kids be damned. This rock will be my new friend. <laughs> this rock will be my new friend. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's not that I have the intention of not making friends at the school, but start, st starting a school year in the middle of a semester wasn't going to be easy. Everyone's already gotten into their little friend groups. I've already bonded. Not much room for a new kid. Especially one who isn't even a delinquent. Then why am I here if I'm not a delinquent? I kick the rock a little too forcefully and it skitters far ahead of me. I walk in slow motion as it zooms towards a storm drain. Also, I want to make this clear. When I'm reading these, it's not that like I'm a big stutter. I mean, I do stutter sometimes. It's not that I'm like a big stutterer. It's just that there are a lot of words and I can read. I'm very literate. I'm so good at reading. I just don't wear my glasses. I, I, I need glasses actually, but I haven't worn glasses in like two years. So there's a reason I struggle to read the words sometimes. I need new glasses. I lost my old ones. All right, sorry, small little rant. Let's get back to it. Plop. Off to a great start. Love the plop. I just killed my one and only friend. Hella expensive for no reason. Yeah! Like, I'll pull up to the optometrist and they're like, all right, yeah, you can get this new pair of glasses for $300. Like, what? I'll be blind, thanks. Whoa, fountain. So this is it, huh? I was expecting busted windows and weeds. Maybe a little bit of ominous lighting. But it looks like any other school. The kids, too. Sure, there's more than a few crazy hairstyles, and most have taken very generous libertations with the uniform. But they're not that bad. Nintendo Switch glasses. I would buy a Nintendo Switch over glasses any other day. Oh my god, my Nintendo Switch is so messed up because of little kids. I'm not gonna go into detail, but I need my own personal Switch. But the thing is, I am broke! I'm broke! I need more money for a Switch, please. I'm begging you. Please. More money for a Switch. No, I can't get weak. Yeah, you know, I want a new Switch so badly. I should, I should link my, I should, I should, I should link my PayPal in the chat. No, I can't get weak. Even if I'm lonely, 
I can't let my guard down. If I do, the next thing I'll know, I'll be in a gang and committing petty crimes and arson. Oh, fuck yeah, I love arson. Gotta stay on my toes. Love being on my toes. No one else touches it except friends. Overprotective of it. I'd be overprotective of my Switch, too. Like, I wouldn't let it leave the house. Constant vigilance. Oh, God. Oh, God, the voices. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll be back. Give me one second, one second, one second. All right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay. So... I have never seen any of the JoJo dubs. I am, I don't like to call myself an elitist or a purist when it comes to anime. I'll watch the dub for animes, but for JoJo, I I can't do the dub. You know, I, I haven't even heard it. Hold on, I'm genuinely, okay. Wait, who is this? Hey there. Oh, it's Josuke! Okay, okay, let's hear Josuke's dub voice. Hold on. We're gonna Yes, we're gonna do this every time we see a character. Uh, wait, okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, oh, this is intense. Ah, holy shit! Oh, it's just that turtle again. So I was right. It's not as bad as it could be. I mean, it could be so much worse. No. Have you ever seen the first, like, the Phantom Blood dub? The Phantom Blood dub is so funny. Especially, especially with the British accents. Because Jonathan will be like, Hello, Dio. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Jonathan Joestar, but most people call me Jojo. This is my dog, Danny. Like, <laughs> that's just the entire dub. That's it. Oh, my. No, Dio's funny in the dub, too. Oh, my God. You petulant fools. I'll kill all of you. Oh, my God. The dub is just so good. Not because it's done well, but because it's funny. <laughs> Hello, Jojo. <laughs> it's so good. All right, all right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's get back on track. I jump and immediately take on a defensive stance that I've seen in old kung fu movies. The guy laughs and looks me up and down. Oh, don't you dare, bro. Whoa there, pal. I ain't looking for trouble. He seems nice enough. I ease my fist down. I was ready to put him up. Give him the old one, too. So, I guess I was right to assume that you're the new kid, right? Mr. Jonathan. Jonathan is here! Jonathan, my beloved! Oh, I love Jonathan. Oh, he deserved the world. Oh, Jonathan. Wait, so are they like... Are they not related in this? Oh. I'm confused. You know, okay. Um, alright then. Yeah, um... I'm not gonna say what's it to you, that's mean. Um, I'll say is it that obvious. Oh, look at his little wink. He's cute, he's cute. I, I haven't seen that much of his character, but he's cute. Alright. Ah, uh, that's not a bad thing. You're just a fresh face is all. Okay, so this is a school for delinquents. How many kids, like, are here, you know? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> if the carriage driver wasn't a dumbass, the universe of JoJo wouldn't happen. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh my god, you're right. I remember. Oh my god, the old man who was trying to steal from um. Did you know? Fun little fact. You know, big recall back to Phantom Blood. Jonathan's father's name is George. So he was a Jojo too. And I love that. Well, I guess George. Joe Star, Jojo. Yeah, I, Jesus was a Jojo. Wait. Don't say that. Don't say that to me. Don't say that to me. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> he leans in. And your uniform is pretty, uh... 
ordinary. The teen laughs. Why is he built like he's got an hourglass? I want to be built like that. Look at that. Canonical too. Oh, okay, but actually you're wrong because during his crucifixion, I didn't see the birthmark, so I don't think you're actually right. Sorry, in part seven, he was shown as the first Jojo. You're joking, right? I need to Google this. Hold on. You have to be lying. You have to be lying. You have to be lying. Hold on. I have to Google this. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's it's true. Oh my Oh my god. Joshua son of Joseph. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my is is this sacrilege for me to be is this sacrilege for me to be saying that Joseph or uh, uh, Jesus was a Jojo I can't do this mentally right now. Oh god. Well, yeah, almost everyone spices them up. I make a mental note to spice up my uniform as soon as I can. Maybe a couple of pins on the lapel or something. Would that be thuggish enough? Why am I at a school for delinquents if I'm not a delinquent? Mr. Jonathan asked me to give you a little tour. Uh, oh yeah. I'm Josuke, by the way. That's a, that's a weird expression. They collect his body to get power in part seven. Weird part, but good part. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. What should I call you? What is my hero? He got no, no, no. Um, should I continue going with Titty McGee? I don't know. Hmm. No, no, I won't do that. I won't do that. Um, what should I call myself? You know, um, I don't know. Uh, no, you know. There we go. Perfect. Oh, by the way, let me make this apparent real quick. Okay, so it turns out this dating sim is a lot longer than I thought. You know, there are seven parts and apparently... Okay, no, no, there are... Okay, there are a bunch of parts and they... You know, they there are different routes and they take a certain amount of time to do, like an hour probably. So I can't possibly do them all in one stream. Like, I, I can barely do an hour long stream. So I'm going to be doing this game for a few weeks, you know, every Tuesday. So that's just another incentive to follow me because, you know, <laughs> who doesn't want to watch a JoJo dating sim for a few weeks? All right. Sorry. Back to the game. Also, thank you, Fragilities, for the follow. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> well, bald bitch, let's get going, shall we? Oh, this is great. Josuke shows me around. Kids are milling around the hallways and filtering in the classrooms, paying us little mind. Everything actually looks pretty ordinary. Huh? Nothing. It's just, this plate might actually be a little nicer than the school I used to go to. Well, you know what they say. Don't judge a book by its uh, asshole alert. Wait, who's coming for him to say that? Ooh. No, it's Joseph! It's my boy Joseph! Let's go! But before I have time to ask, a guy bounds up to us and wraps an arm around Josuke's neck like they're the best of buds. Wait, okay, wait, no, that's his dad. That's literally his dad. Let me make sure I got the... Yeah, that's his dad, what? But by Josuke's face, I can tell that's most likely not the case. Oi, Josuke-chan. 
Josuke sighs through his nose and doesn't bother to hide his annoyance. I told you not to call me that. The guy pinches Josuke's cheek. And I told you to call me senpai, but you don't. This is what people call a stalemate, Josuke-chan. Their, their father and son. What the fuck? Italian and paralyzed man do a race to collect dead Jesus body parts to prevent the president from getting them? Excuse me? That's the plot of part set. Excuse me? Okay, okay. You know what? I'll accept it. It's JoJo. It's called Bizarre for a reason. It says Bizarre Adventure. Why do his, like, muscles look so shiny? Like, but right before he left the house, he, like, just absolutely slathered himself in some coconut oil. Josuke huffs and shrugs the guy's arm off of him. Shouldn't you be in class? Nah. Josuke scoffs. What do you mean, nah? Class isn't optional. It is when you have bigger fish to fry. I've been quietly watching the exchange the whole time, but now the guy's eyes fall on me. Oh, no! Okay, I love Joseph. Don't get me wrong. I'm aware that he's a little racist. Wait, is he the racist one? He is the racist one. He is. He did beat up an Asian man in an airport simply because he was Japanese, but we don't need to talk about that. Speaking of fish, I'd like to fry. Oh! Do not say that to me! That was a whole violation right there. That was, that was just not acceptable. Oh, God. I don't like the way he's looking at me. Put your eyes somewhere else. He holds his hand out to me. I'm Joseph. Joseph Joestar. Yeah, yeah. Did you just call me a fish? Joseph grins before giving me a lazy wink. Well, if you are a fish, then I'll be the water. What does that mean? You want me to be inside you? You're trying to get pegged? What? Okay! What the hell is that even supposed to mean? Yeah! Thank you, Josuke! Interpret it as you will. <laughs> God, he's a himbo. I love him. Wait, so, so are you the person frying the fish or are you the water? Both. Josuke rolls his eyes and rests his hand on his cocked hip. Stop harassing the new kid and just tell us what you want. Joseph straightened up and finally gets to the heart of the matter. Have you seen Caesar around? The bell rings, signaling that class is starting. The last few stragglers in the hallway disappear into different doors, leaving the three of us alone. Joseph doesn't seem protrubed in the slightest. Out of formation played dog base for zero bit. Whoa! Wait, do I have my alert sounds on? Oh, no. Oh, it's probably so quiet. <laughs> Sorry about that. He's probably in class, you know, like he's supposed to be. Like you're supposed to be. Joseph sticks out his tongue at Josuke playfully. Don't act like you don't cut class, Josu-chan. Me and the new kid aren't fooled in the slightest. It's clear that Josuke is about to sputter some response, but the Joseph guy gives a hearty laugh and claps him on the back. I'm sorry, man. I'm only teasing you. Why does he talk like that? This man is British! You just make it so easy. Uh, yeah, we gotta get going, fish guy. Fish? Ha! Well, I guess I had that one coming. He gives Josuke one last pat on the back for a good measure before giving us a cheery goodbye. As he leaves, he calls back. If you see Caesar, tell him to meet me by the fountain or he automatically loses the race. Are they just racing like middle schoolers? <laughs> Where they're like, okay, everyone, line up at the edge of the playground, and then we're going to run to the woods that surround the playground, and whoever's fastest uh, gets to have Melody be their girlfriend. Like, that's... Oh, my God. Not even middle school. Whoops. That's elementary school stuff. The race? 
But his question is all heard only by me, because Joseph is jogging merrily down the hall and turning the quarter. Corner. <laughs> Fucking quarters. I love quarters. Quarters are my favorite because I have a claw machine obsession. And I'm good at claw machines. I am proud of that. Well, that guy is certainly something. Uh, like, he may be a little out of it in this game. But at the end of the day... Can you guys not hear the music? Whoops. I guess I had it too close. Oh, no! Don't look at my desktop. I'll cry. Actually, no. Hold on. Yeah, I might as well do some stuff while I'm tabbed out a little bit. Okay. There we go. I need another monitor, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Joseph's still my boy. I'm not going to clown on him just because he said something. My favorite thing about Part 7 is there's a stand called Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap Nad. Localization is filthy acts at a reasonable. <laughs> Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. And its localization is filthy acts at a reason. Filthy acts at a reasonable price. That sounds like a brothel. <laughs> it sounds like a brothel. Oh uh, yeah, that that dude is certainly something. Josuke laughs. Yeah, that's certainly one way to put it. But really, he's not a bad guy. He just rambunctious. Yeah, that's a good word. He sucks in a deep breath. <coughs> I shouldn't have done that, my asthmatic ass. He sucks in a deep breath and lets his cheeks puff out before exhaling it. Bro, he was vaping oxygen. Oh my god. So anyways, let's get back to that tour. Josuke is really talkative, giving me people to watch out for, pointers of how to fit in, and other odds and ends of information. He's quick to laugh and has a certain charm that makes me feel at ease. Well, that's our humble little school. I guess it's time to get to class now. No! Because if I have any excuse to skip class, I'm not a huge skipper. I'm not a delinquent. I'm a, I'm a goody two-shoes. I'm a bit of a goody two-shoes. But if I get any opportunity to skip class, I am doing it. And there's no time limit? You better believe I'm about to be gone for 45 minutes. Like my, can I go get some water? Yeah, that's going to last 10 minutes by itself. I don't know. That roof could probably use another looking over you, don't you think? Are you serious? Are you suggesting that we cut class? I am! I am! I love Josuke in this game so far. I haven't met Jotaro, so I'm not trying to, like, you know, count on everything before. But I really like Josuke so far. He's so cute. His eyes are gleaming with mischief. I smile back at him. Don't you dare tell Joseph. He'll never let me live it down. Sounded to me like he already knows you're doing delinquent hoop. You're a delinquent who cuts class. That's true. You can't do anything without that guy knowing. It's like the bastard has a sixth sense or something. But anyways. Josuke raises a fist into the air. To the rooftop! Yeah! Let's go to the rooftop! As soon as we step on the roof, Josuke stretches his arms to the sky and tilts his head up towards the sun. Ah, it feels too far. It feels far too good out here to be cooped up in a classroom. The way he's stretching in the sunlight kind of reminds me of a cat. It's cute. <laughs> we were we were having a moment. We were having a moment, and he just goes, "Hey, bald bitch." <laughs> He motions for me to follow him further onto the roof. Come on, let's get comfortable. Oh, look at my boy! He's just chilling! He lays down on the ground, wasting no time in stretching out. His eyes are closed and there's a content smile on his face, only furthering my thoughts of him being like a cat. I lay down next to him. Wow, I get the appeal of this. 
The sun really does feel good. I close my eyes and enjoy the sound of the breeze rustling the trees around the school. When the soft wind reaches us, it smells earthy and fresh. At this rate, I'm going to fall asleep. So what brought you to the school? I look over at Josuke, my body feeling lazy and heavy from the sun. By the way his eyelids were drooping, I can tell he's feeling the same way. Oh my god, these options! These are certainly something! I'll say, why did you come here? <laughs> Josuke arches an eyebrow knowingly. Avoiding the question, are we? Ah. I shrug, avoiding his question again. Josuke puckers his lips out in thought before giving a shrug of his own. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. He's so sweet! He's so sweet! Oh, he's so nice! I'm, I'm falling in love. I just... Him. Just thoughts of him. He's awesome. We sit in silence for another long while. It's certainly not the first time I've thought about it. But this school is pretty chill. The people are a bit eccentric, but they're friendly. I can see myself having a good school year here. With a sleepy groan, Josuke sits up. He runs his hands through the back of his hair, seeming to make sure everything is still in place. We should probably head back before Mr. Jonathan freaks. I nod my head reluctantly. I could stay up here all day, but Josuke's right. Aww. Jonathan look like that? Look at the fit! Everyone looks at us when we enter the room, as to be expected. The teacher, Mr. Jonathan, stops writing on the board and gives us both a sunny smile. Alright, I'm gonna do a British accent for this one since Jonathan is British. Get ready. <clears throat> there you are. I was starting to wonder if you two had gotten lost. He looks to me and smiles even brighter. Wow, if he keeps this up, I'm gonna go blind. I know I'm not thirsting after the teacher, no. You must be bald, bitch. It's great to meet you. The teacher just addresses you as bald, bitch. So it's nice to meet you too, Mr. Jonathan. We're gonna be polite. I don't like the way he's looking at me. Like, I love Jonathan, don't get me wrong, but I do not appreciate the way he is looking at me. What a positive attitude. I appreciate that. Look at his smile! Ah -ha! Did Josuke give you a good tour? I hope he wasn't too troublesome. We only did a handful of petty crimes. Nothing federal, rest assured. Oh, and he's got a sense of humor! And he's got a sense of humor! I'm in love. I'm just in love. Jonathan shakes his head and Josuke laughs before heading to his seat. Would you like to introduce yourself to the class, bald bitch? I very much would like to not do it, but I know it's a rhetorical question. I turn to the class. All right, we we got we, we got three options here. Hey plebs, I'm bald bitch. Hi, I'm bald bitch. So uh, I'm bald bitch. All of them are absolutely charming. I think we go. Hmm. Yeah, let's just be polite. You know, it's the first day. Okay, so far so good. I'm here to crack some skulls and learn some. No, why would you say that? I'm excited to be part of your class. Okay, the final statement. I got this. Um, I look forward to meeting all of you. Yeah, we're going to be polite. We're going to say hello. This is my name. Nice to meet you. I'm excited to be here and then sit my ass down. I bow politely and there's a bit of curious chatter around the room. What a lovely introduction, bald bitch. Jonathan claps his hands together. We've got a few seats available. Choose whichever one you want. 
This is cool. I'm sitting next to my man, Josuke. I don't hesitate. Josuke is my only lifeline in this school, and I'm going to take every opportunity I'm given to stick by him. As I make my way to the seat, I can see Josuke try to hide a smile. Is he happy that I chose to sit by him? Class here is pretty much the same, too. Maybe with the exception of the teacher, who I'm pretty sure used to be a bodybuilder. Or a model. Or both. Even if he's big and pretty. <laughs> big and pretty. He's still got that teacher charm that makes me zone out and daydream. I wonder what's going to be served for lunch. Something slides across my desk, pulling me from my near dozing. I look over and Josuke is tapping a pen against his lips innocently, looking all too suspicious with the way he's suddenly absorbed with the lesson. <laughs> Bitch, just my... Uh, that has nothing to do with my name, by the way. That's just in there. <laughs> Bitch, just five minutes ago you were falling asleep. I can see through your ruse, Josuke. I read it over a few times before picking up my pen. Meet me after class if you want an ask kid. By ask kid, I mean if you want to hang out. Oh, oh, that's so cute. Oh. I love him. I, I just love him. Yes, yes, we're going to hang out with him. Honestly, I think it's cute that he passed me a note. I don't think my friends and I have done that since elementary school. It makes it seem <laughs> really sweet. Maybe a little intimate, too. Oh, yo, chill. You just met the guy. Or maybe I'm reading into this piece of paper way too much. I make up my mind and jot down an answer. <laughs> Bring it on, motherfucker. By that, I mean yes. But then I hesitate again. Should I sign it with a heart? That might be too straightforward, but it also might make Josuke really happy. My pen is hovering over the paper. The biggest decision of my note passing career in front of me. Yes! We are putting a heart. I put hearts on everything. I don't care. It could be platonic or not. It's getting a heart. I draw hearts all day. Heart, heart, heart. Let's go. I do it with a click flourish, refusing to give myself time to back out of my decision. My heart is <laughs> pattering like crazy as I read over it. I hope it's not too much. I slide it back to Josuke, keeping my eyes focused on Mr. Jonathan all the while. Josuke doesn't pass anything back to me, and after a minute I look covertly over to him. He's still acting like he's hyper-interested in the lesson, but there's an unmistakable blush reddening his cheeks. Oh! When class ends, Josuke waits for me by the door. Look at him! Look at his little face! Couldn't he have just done this in the first place and not pass a note? It makes me think that he couldn't wait till after class to talk to me. Cute. I hope you're ready for that ass kicking. And by that, I mean, I hope you're thirsty. <laughs> I'm always thirsty, especially if it's something I don't have to pay for. Josuke laughs. <laughs> I feel that, man. I sit on the wide edge of the fountain as Josuke goes to nearby vending machines. Almost everybody has already left. There's a few stragglers here and there, but other than that, we're alone. I look at the bottom of the fountain, where a few coins are scattered about. The water makes them look like look wavering and fat. I let my finger skim the top of the surface. The water's chilly, but not unpleasant. Why the hell does the school need a fountain? It seems like a waste of money to me. It's still pretty cool, though. Sorry to keep you waiting. He holds out two cans, one grape and one apple. Apple! I'm not getting grape, that's racist! I point at the apple one and he hands it over before sitting next to me and cracking his open. So, what do you think? Think of what? Oh, his ear is pierced. I like that. Josuke takes a sip of his juice before gesturing to, gesturing to the schoolyard. Of the school, now that you've gotten a full day in. I answer him honestly. It's not bad. Definitely not what I was expecting. Josuke grins at me. All the new people say that. I guess they think it's going to be all doom and gloom since the problem kids come here. But it's actually really chill. I open my juice and take a sip. It's nice and cold. Hmm. Damn. Damn, this juice is banging. 
You don't strike me as a problem, kid. He looks a little sheepish. Well, I mean... I wouldn't exactly say I'm a problem, kid. But I do have a bit of a temper sometimes. Huh. I would have never guessed that he had a short fuse. You learn something new every day, I guess. So, is that why you're here, then? Josuke shrugs, turning his juice can in his hands absently. Yeah, I was going to Morio High School, and I got in a little fight on the first day of school. The first day? He shrugs again. But this place really isn't that bad. I've met a lot of cool people and stuff. And, I mean, he refused to take his eyes off of his drink. I wouldn't have met you if I was still going to Morio, so there's that. Oh, Awww! I'm too shocked to say anything. I look down at my own juice and can feel my face heating up. We sit in silence for a while, taking small sips of our drinks and just enjoying each other's company. Oh! Ah! Josuke hops up from the fountain and nearly stumbles over himself as he takes a few bounds away to distance himself from the fountain. I'm so confused. I look at the fountain, not understanding what has made him freak out so hardcore. And that's when I see it. A turtle? A turtle is on the edge of the round fountain, ambling its way around. I look to Josuke, and his eyes are glued to the little critter. His chest is heaving, and his expression is wild. Are you okay? Fuck no, I'm not. Is it... is it looking at me? He walks in a distressed circle, his hands behind his head. The little bastard is looking at me! I set my juice down and stand up, brushing off the seat of my uniform. Um... Uh... Okay, clearly he has like a beef with turtles, right? Um... I'll, I'd say calm down, I guess. He looks shocked at my words. His face falls into a flat state. Whatever, I gotta go. No! Let's say there's no reason to be scared. Jusuke barks out a forced laugh. You think I don't know that? I can't help what scares me. It's obvious he's freaked out. I don't hold his curtness against him. It's all good, Josuke. I picked up his abandoned juice and walk over to him. He takes the can from me, and I see that his hands are trembling. Maybe we should wrap it up for the day. Josuke swallows thickly and nods his head, never taking his eyes off the turtle. We walk towards the school gate, Josuke casting nervous looks behind him, like the turtle might be lumbering towards him even now. We say our goodbyes, and Josuke is quick to take off down the slope. I stay where I am, watching him leave. Later. Oh, that was gorgeous. School rushes by, and before I know it, I'm sitting in the last class of the day. The science lab looks like the kind I'm used to. The class got divided up into groups and set in front of us as a gallon of milk and some vinegar. Who knew it was possible to make plastic out of this stuff? That's interesting, I didn't know that. I don't care much for science, so I let my group members conduct the experiment while I just take notes. Everything is going by swimmingly. There's not much left to- Whoa, whoa, be careful with that stuff! I turn in the direction of the panicked yelling and to witness Josuke stumble backwards into a bookshelf. It was like watching the tragedy of an avalanche bury uncomfortable skiers alive. Josuke toppled to the ground only to find himself pelted with whatever science books that were above. I hop off my seat, ready to help him out. Everyone else clings to their beakers and microwavable containers. Miss Lisa Lisa just- Lisa Lisa! I love Miss Lisa Lisa! Just lifts her head from whatever teacher thing she is doing. I can hear Josuke groaning under the pile of books. Josuke, are you okay? Not at all. I pick the books off him one by one, finding his face behind some text dedicated to the research of electrical conductivity in certain beetles. That is a reference. That is a reference. That is a reference. I'm sure I, I can't remember what part is referenced in with the beetles, but I know it's there. I'm thinking, oh no, I can't even put my finger on it. Oh, this is going to bother me now. Oh God. He got Shikata. Stay after class to clean up that mess. No, I'll stay after with him. No, my boy didn't do anything. What? Why? It was an accident. You made the mess, didn't you? Accident or not, 
and while you'll be here, take over cleaning duty. That's so messed up. You done did him dirty. He didn't do anything. Yes, Sensei. Josuke pouts, and I almost want to laugh. <laughs> Adorable. I'll stay and help. I look from Miss Lisa Lisa to Josuke. Wait, really? Yeah, I mean, you want to deal with this by yourself? Josuke shakes his head and nearly jumps back up onto his feet. Hell no, your help would be great. You got Shikata. Josuke's shoulders tense. Language. He nods and bows his head towards her. Yes, Sensei. Anyway, do whatever as long as that mess gets cleaned up. Lucky for you, it's not like those books were arranged in any sort of order. I look at Josuke with a smile. He smiles back in time to pout again when Miss Lisa Lisa tells the whole class to start wrapping up the plastic milk experiment. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! The bell noise scared me! Oh my god! The last bell of the day has rung, and I'm alone with Josuke to rearrange the bookshelf. Ooh! Man, this bites. If that guy in my group wasn't so reckless with the milk, he wouldn't have splashed on me and I wouldn't have bumped into the stupid thing. He kicks out the shelf lightly. I worry for a second it'll come down on him again. So it didn't get on you? No, but it almost did. Anyway, thanks again for staying with me. I look up to respond, but we catch each other's eyes as we soon as we reach for the same book. Ooh! Our hands almost brush against each other and I realize just how close we are. Ah! Ah! Josuke stares at me, full lips slightly parted as if he was going to say something. I feel my throat go dry. Panic swelling in my chest. This reads like a fan fiction, but I guess that's to be expected from a visual novel. What the hell? You know we're staring back. I can't move. His eyes catch me off guard with how gorgeous they are. I don't even feel like I'm looking at another person. You're pretty. The sound of his voice is too close and it shakes me back into reality. His words linger on my consciousness and I feel the heat smoldering in my chest. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? My eyes go wide and I'm staring at his lips. He seems to be aware and consciously darts his tongue out to lick at them nervously. Ooh! The romantic tension! This is so well written! I swallow the lump in my throat. I have to say something or do something. This is already weird and I'm making it weirder by staring at those beautiful eyes and kissable lips. You know we gotta flirt back. That's what we're doing. What? What's cooking yourself, good looking? Oh God, oh God, that was awful. Oh no. Oh god, what the hell did I say? Did I say that? I feel my face light up. I mean, I... Josuke stifles a laugh and I take the cue. I shake my head with a sheepish smile. Ignore that. I don't know what I was saying. No, it's okay. I didn't mean to, uh, scare you. Wait, what? I wasn't scared, just... Flustered? Embarrassed? Flattered? Surprised that you're bold. It was Josuke's turn to feel a bit hot under the collar. Well, I... He clears his throat. It's not like you're ugly. <laughs> it's not like you're ugly. Alright, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's a win. That's a big dub. Big dub. Let's go. I snore into a fit of laughter and jokingly threaten to throw a book at him. I hope not, but still, uh, thanks. We share a brief exchange of smiles and continue to clean up. My heart is determined to expose me with its loud, insistent beating, and I really don't care. It's hard to with the butterflies of warmth swelling inside of me. I then hear a sigh of distress and look to over towards Josuke. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just getting late, and I'm sure my mom's gonna chew me out when I get home. 
This is the first time Josuke has brought up his family. I'm curious, what should I pry? I'll say how upset will she get, because I am concerned. You know, I don't want him getting in trouble. Oh no! I almost regret asking the question as soon as it left my mouth. It's not really my business, is it? But Josuke didn't look upset or seem reluctant to answer. He just shrugs and approaches the broom closet. Not enough to knock sense into me, but I won't reach my room without a good nagging, that's for sure. He pulls out the broom and starts sweeping. Her nagging can't be that bad, can it? Hold on. Gotta adjust my pop filter. Her nagging can't be that bad, can it? I put away the last of the books, making sure they're as neat as can be. When satisfied, I start tending to the lab stools. Well, she's my mom. I can handle it. <laughs> if you say so. I smile to myself, enjoying the comfortable atmosphere between us. I wish moments like these with Josuke will happen a lot more. What about your dad? Would he be upset or worried about you getting home late? Okay, yeah. How are they going to explain this? Because Joseph was literally out here chilling in the school. But, but Joseph is his dad. There's a shift in the air that makes me look up at him. Josuke is standing still and staring down at the floor in deep thought. Josuke? I don't have a dad. Oh! Oh, that went... Oh! Oof. Oh, shit. Well, more like... I don't know him. Mom doesn't like to talk about him too much either, so... He shrugs and continues to sweep. The most I know is that she met him during her early years in college. I don't know what to say. What can I say? I... I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, I know. You don't have to feel bad about asking. You really didn't know. I gulp and slowly start arranging the stools again. It's just... He talks as we work and I make every effort to keep listening to him. It's one of those things you get picked on when you're a kid, you know? People always think it's something they should give you pity for. Josuke sighs sharply and I begin to notice the weight on his shoulders. Must really be something he spends a lot of time thinking about. Anyway, I've always felt like meeting him one day. He kinda owes me a lot. That's fair. That's fair. I take a few seconds to process what he's telling me. The look on his face makes it obvious he's bothered. I should really say something. I'll say I'm sure one day you will. I'll help you if you can. Josuke looks at me and I smile back. Hello. Hello, welcome to the stream. Hi. Hi, Pico. Hi. I just, I hated seeing hi, Pico as soon as it came out of my mouth because of, oh God. Boku no Pico, never mind. I'm sorry, I've tainted your name enough already. Uh, hi, Mimi. And welcome to the stream. Oh, Josuke looks at me and I smile back. It seems the whole business with his father is important to him. It's the least I can do for a friend. Offer my help. You, man, you're such a sap. He shakes his head and looks to the floor in an attempt to hide his smile. I always miss your streams because of time zones, but hey, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you join the stream and we're immediately talking about how Josuke's never met his father. <laughs> Yeah, um, also with the time zones thing, I have a tendency to stream pretty late because I'm, I'm EST, I'm EST. So I always stream EST time and I always stream late for me. So I can't imagine what time it is for others. He shakes his head and looks back to the floor in an attempt to hide his smile. Thanks though, that means a lot. No problem. As delinquents gotta look out for each other after all. We both carry on with our jobs. The smiles on our faces don't waver one bit, and I somehow feel closer to Josuke with these few exchanges of words. I don't even notice when we only have the trash left to deal with. Let's both go take care of this. He grabs the bin and motions towards the door. Hey, yeah, it's half three in the mor- Whoa! It's late! Okay, oh, what are you doing up? Oh my goodness! What are you doing awake? 
I mean, I won't complain because you're here, but you need to get proper sleep. Take care of yourself. Oh, oh, make sure you're drinking water and stuff, too. It's not good to be up this late. He grabs the bin and motion towards the door. I just wanted to stop by. Good, well, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Grabs the bin and motion towards the door. I peer into the trash can and see a few crumpled papers. I can see why you need help. Are you sure you can lift that all by yourself? Jessica scoffs and pretends to struggle with lifting the trash. Yeah, man. My weak, tiny arm just can't take it. He lets out a fake cry of pain and I laugh. The dumpsters come into view and we head straight for them. So, how was your second day here? Well, as good as school can be. You made it better, though. Yeah, go to sleep now. Go to sleep. Good night. I hope you have sweet dreams. Jessica laughs nervously and squares his shoulders. I'm flattered my presence matters. It's true. Whatever shall I do without you? My night in, uh... I gesture vaguely at him. Cotton armor? What is he wearing? Like, are those are those pins? Like, the heart and the peace sign. What are those? I put a hand to my face dramatically and bat my eyelashes at him. I can see the impulse to flex his biceps flash across his face. But Josuke commits to holding the garbage. We share a quick laugh before stepping up to the dumpsters. I take the bin from him with a grin. Allow me. You carried it over here. He gives it up without protest and I dump the contents. With the bin now empty, we turn back towards the main building. But when I take a step, my uniform gets snagged on the dumpster. As I'm falling, I reach for to grab something, anything, to stop myself from hitting the ground. What? I grab a fistful of Josuke's sleeve. He's quick to respond, reaching out to stop me from landing on concrete. Yo! He takes his arm around my waist and pulls me close. He somehow manages to hold me upright and tight against his chest. My eyes are still wide from the initial panic, and all I can see all I can see is that damn blue again. I swallow the lump in my throat and feel the heat crawl up my neck. I'm thank you. What are you students doing? We jump apart, the rosy atmosphere between us dissipating in an instant. Shit, it's someone. Pr principal D. He's the principal! He's the principal! Pr principal Dio. Oh, shit, it's the principal. He looks us over critically. One of his manicured, eye his manicured eyebrows? Raised. Care. Mm -hmm. what, um, oof, what voice am I giving him right now? I gotta think this one through. Okay, oof. Care to explain why you two are sharing a gentle embrace behind the building after school hours? I fell and I caught both, bitch, so... So I wouldn't fall. That's all there is to it, honest. Our story is rushed and defensive, making it seem as fake as a politician's promise. Yo, chill! The principal doesn't seem to buy it. His lips are pursed and his eyes are flat. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever you were doing, it better not happen again. Or you two children can share sweet nothings in detention. <laughs> I can feel heat rise into my cheeks. Josuke's in the same boat, at least. So, sorry, Principal Dio. Picks up the trash bin, his head down. Aww. <laughs> no more Oz. Let's go, bald bitch. I bow my head to Dio and follow Josuke back inside the school. I can feel the principal's eyes boring into my back the whole time. We look around the classroom, making sure everything is in order. Well, uh, it's obvious we are both still reeling from the accidental intimate scene we shared. I guess I'll go bring the key to the staff room. Yeah, I guess I'll see you tomorrow? Haha, <laughs> you betcha! Oh, we both part ways. When Josuke's out of sight, I stop and give myself a moment to process everything. 
What the hell? What would have happened if the principal hadn't shown up? My heart kicks into high gear at the thought. It's way too easy for me to recall the feeling of Josuke's arms around my waist, the warm broadness of his chest, the smell of cheap cologne and hairspray. Smell I wanted to get lost in again. Seen. What? Did that say? That said seen, right? I'm gonna assume that said seen. Oh my god! Oh my god, Caesar, my seed queen! <laughs> I mean, you can argue all you want, but it's pretty obviously just lazy handwriting. Well, you can argue all you want, but it all boils down to the fact... I don't know why I'm doing Caesar and Joseph so dirty here with the voices, but they're gonna have to deal with it. Well, you can argue all you want, but it all boils down to the fact that you're too lazy to use your imagination. Or they talked the suitcase up so much they couldn't think of anything satisfying to review because it would never be as fantastical as they built it up to be. Are they, are they talking about FNAF? Are they talking about Five Nights at Freddy's? And that's why it's left to the viewer because their imagination can come up with the individual would find the most fantastical, thus making it satisfying to everyone. They've been at it all morning. Three of us usually chat before class, and it always turns to lighthearted arguments like this. Joseph looks to me, obviously annoyed at the back and forth of their discussion. What do you think, bald bitch? By what do you me think he means, please decide who is in the right. Okay, so. I agree with Caesar that it was kind of left to interpretation, but I also like do think it's a little lazy. So I think they're both right, honestly. Wait, I'm gonna assume we're still talking about FNAF here. Um, yeah, I think it was a little lazy, but I do think it was also up to interpretation. What if this wasn't about FNAF and my hmm, my sheep brain was just is just constantly thinking about Five Nights at Freddy's? Why don't we settle this over a royale with cheese? Not sure what that means, but I am going to press it. Joseph's grin widens. Ah, that's such a good cop-out. Ah, oh, awesome cop-out. That was great. I love cop-outs. They're my favorite. But it's an acceptable answer. You're off the hook this time. Caesar opens his mouth, obviously about to launch right back into the debate. Josuke walks into the classroom right then, saving me from any more of their debate. Joseph seems to notice me perk up and whips his head around before turning back to me with a wink. Come on, Caesar Chan. Let's give these lovebirds some privacy. Ooh. Lovebird. My face is flushed when Josuke plops his bag down in his seat and turns towards me. What was that about? I'll say he called us lovebirds. I'm, try I'm trying to make something happen here. And, you know, I gotta give it a little push if I want it to happen. Uh, oh. Seeing him blush only makes me blush harder. Josuke shoot, shoots a look over at Joseph, who's watching us from his desk across the room. Josuke flips him the bird and Joseph catches it before putting it against his heart and batting his lashes. Mr. Jonathan walks in and the chatter in the classroom dies down. He takes attendance and I can't help but notice that he's in a really good mood. Well, maybe that's not the best way to put it since good seems to be his permanent state of mood. He seems excited about something. Mr. Jonathan rushes through morning announcements before taking a deep breath and beaming at the class. Last but not certainly not least to discuss is... He pauses dramatically. The class field trip. Woo! We're going on a field trip. The students erupt in excited chatter and Mr. Jonathan waits a few seconds before speaking up again. This year, we'll be going to the beach. Oh, let's go to the beach. More excited chatter. I can't lie, I'm pretty pumped too. Jonathan starts going over the details of the trip and I turn to Josuke to share my delight. Why does he look so downcast? But keep in mind that if your grades don't look good, his cheeriness has subsided into a serious tone, then your chances of participating aren't going to look good. Oh. We are going to help him study! 
We are going to help our boy Josuke. We are going to help him study because he deserves it. He deserves the world. Jonathan wraps up the announcements and plunges right into the morning lesson. My good mood at the news of the class trip is soured. I really don't want to go if Josuke has to stay behind. Just how bad are his grades? Oh my god, it's so loud. When the lunch bell rings, Josuke doesn't jump up from his desk like usual. Instead, he gets up like an inmate going to the electric chair. Hey, Josuke? Yeah. <laughs> Your flies down. I'm gonna, yeah. He looks down in alarm, only to see that I was lying. Ha! Gotcha! He gives a stiff smile. You, uh, you sure did. I give him a nice set of finger guns. Whatever's got you down doesn't stand a chance against my humor. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm at the very least. No! Did he not like it? I thought I was being, I don't know, quirky. Come on, don't you love me? I'm so quirky. Still, the thought of everyone going to the beach and having fun while I'm stuck here isn't a nice one. My finger guns curl up and die before I drop them all together. Uh, yeah, I could see how that could suck. Yeah, it sucks big time. Well, there's only one thing we can do in this situation. We're gonna change your grade before then. Josuke scoffs. No amount of studying is going to bump my grade up enough by the end of the month. I mean, I appreciate the offer, don't get me wrong, but my grades has to raise my whole letter by the end of the month. You can do that. You can raise your letter grade up in the span of a month. You can 100% do that. Damn, he's right. He's really not. Don't give up hope, Josuke. We could still pull it off. My face, I can tell he knows that it's impossible. Josuke drags his hands down his face and groans. The only hope we have is Mr. Jonathan goes in and changes my grade, which definitely isn't happening. That gives me a little sprout of an idea. Maybe it doesn't have to be Mr. Jonathan who changes the grade? Josuke cocks an eyebrow, obviously confused. Maybe, maybe we can go in and change the grade. Are you serious? He looks around the empty classroom before leaning in and lowering his voice. We couldn't. That would be insane. Maybe I messed up by suggesting something so extreme. Do you really think we could pull it off? Oh my god, he's down for it. I mean, I think we could. It won't be easy, though. Josuke looks around again. Holy shit, I can't believe we're gonna do this. Do you have a plan? <laughs> I don't. I sit down at my desk and Josuke pulls his up next to mine. Time to start brainstorming. I look at the direction. Are we breaking and entering? Okay then, okay. I see, that's fine. I look at the direction sprawled on my palm. This is definitely the place. Josuke said his mom wasn't home and to just knock but I can feel my heart racing guiltily nonetheless. I'm really antsy about going to a boy's house in the middle of the night with no parental supervision. Yeah, 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 I, I can see why, yep. The fact that we're about to break into the school doesn't help much either. Yeah, woo, I love committing felonies. I gently knock three times on the front door. As the seconds stick by, I feel panic swelling in my gut. Oh god, what if I have the wrong house? I break out in a cold sweat as I shuffle on my feet. It's gonna be hard to explain why a teenager dressed in all black is on someone's porch past midnight. The door opens and I feel like my heart is about to straight up quit on me. Look at him! He's ready to go! Look at the drip! Look at the drip! He's dripping! Bald bitch, you came. My limbs suddenly feel like jelly as relief watches over me. Of course I did. Josuke grins at me and ushers me inside. His house is really nice, even though I can hardly see it in the dark. Be careful. The coffee table's right there. 
Ow! I have no idea why Josuke doesn't just flip on a few lights. Maybe it's his way of mentally preparing for a dark deed we're about to commit. Yeah, we're hyping each other up. Whoa! Look at his room! Look at that comb! I get a good look at Josuke's outfit. The look suits him. Did you get the key? Josuke goes to his desk and picks up something before turning to me with a grin and holding a silver key up. It was almost too easy to nab it. They should probably think of increasing security in the staff room, considering it's a school for delinquents. Did you do your part of the preparations? I propped open one of the side doors to the school before I left. Josuke takes in a deep breath before letting it out in a slow exhale. We're really going to do this. Seems like it. He bounces on his heels like he's about to jump off of a cliff and has to pump himself up for it. I get how he feels. Okay, let's go. Okay, I know this is a game and all, but like I'm actually so like hyped. Like I, I feel the excitement in my chest. We're completely silent as we make the short walk to the school. No cars pass by, but I still feel like we're about to be busted at any second. When I glance at Josuke, his eyes are skittering around our surroundings, just as on edge as I am. Last chance to back out, bald bitch. It's your last chance to back out too, Josuke. Josuke scoffs and puffs, uh, puffs out his chest. Me? Back out? <laughs> I would never. I, I was just asking in case you wanted to back out. Psh, are you kidding me? Danger is my middle name. My day doesn't start until I commit a few B and E's. Yeah, I love committing B and E's. We're both scared out of our minds, but our fake confidence is enough to elevate our spirits a bit. We make our way to the side of the school, and a little part of me is hoping that one of the staff had prop had seen the prop door and closed it. No such luck. Yosuke opens the door, and we both peer into the dark hallway. We go in together! We are in this together! I wrap his wrist and give it a reassuring squeeze. Ooh, let's go! Together? He swallows and gives me a nervous smile. Together. We hesitate for another moment before we both stepping forward. Another step and we're inside the school. I let the door go and it swooshes closed. It feels like that door of... It feels like the door of a crypt closing, and now we're sealed in all with all the spooky critters that frequent such places. I let go of Josuke, even though it's the last thing I wanted to do. I make my voice deep and dramatic. We're in. Josuke snorts quietly. Was that your hacker voice? <laughs> Maybe. He laughs behind his hand and shakes his head. Save it for when we actually break into a computer. A good and fair point. Okay, so we need to go to Mr. Jonathan's room, change your grade, and leave. Easy peasy. The easiest of peasiest. Mr. Jonathan's room isn't too far from where we're at. We both sit close to the wall, the sounds of our footsteps loud and echoing in the hall despite our best efforts to be quiet. We're almost there when Josuke grabs my arm. D did you hear something? We both stop, taking in the deathly science of the school. A few t seconds pass, and the only thing I hear is our hurried breathing and the sound of my heart pumping hectically in my ears. What do you think you heard? I... I don't know. I'm probably being paranoid. We start walking again, but slower and more careful. Josuke doesn't let go of my arm, a fact I'm incredibly aware of. We stop in front of Mr. Jonathan's room. This is it. Josuke gives a shaky nod and fumbles in his pockets for the key. For a moment, I'm worried that he doesn't have it, but he pulls it out and smiles nervously at me. He takes in a deep breath. Let's do this. The sound of the key scraping against the keyhole grates against my nerves. Poor Josuke's hands are trembling like crazy, and it takes him nearly a whole minute of floundering with the doorknob before getting it open. We both scramble into the room and shut the door quickly. Once we're in the room, it's like I can actually breathe. Josuke leans against the door and grins at me. So far, so good. Is that Iggy? That's Iggy right there. I can see Iggy. He's behind the text box. Is that a plush of Iggy? What? What is that? At least we know if that if this doesn't work, we 
can both drop out and take on a life of burglary. <laughs> We're going to take on a life of burglary together. Josuke laughs and slides down the door so that he's sitting. I need a second. My heart's going crazy right now. I sit down next to him and we both let our nerves settle. School really looks different at night. I get what you mean. The moonlight is streaming through the windows, casting everything in a blue tint that's kind of serene. The shadows of the desks are long and dark across the glossy floor, stretched as if reaching for us. The absolute silence, the lighting, it's like we're underwater, just the two of us. I'm glad you came with me. I've never done something so crazy before. Me neither. R really? Yep, I'm pretty straight-laced in all honesty. Josuke laughs. I guess we bring out each other's wild sides. He's quiet for a few moments. So what brought you to the school? Like, really, I've been kind of dying to know. I'll tell the truth. Why wouldn't I tell him the truth? And that's he gets like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that, you criminal. You a gambling man, Josuke. He furrows his brow. When the mood strikes, I suppose. Yeah, I'd say the same for myself. But it just so happened that one of my gambling moods ended in a lost bet. The consequence was for me to, uh, well, to streak across campus. Huh? To what across campus? Jiski's eyes widen. Streak? You mean like... As naked as the day I was born, yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. As you can imagine, the principal didn't think he was as funny as my friends did. Oh, my God. I know. But yeah, that's my origin story. How bald bitch came to be at Uniku Academy, home of delinquents. Well, it's definitely cooler than my origin story. Punching guy in the face is a lot more run-of-the-mill than running around naked. Josuke sighs and gets up. I guess we should get this over with. I get up too. We both head to Mr. Jonathan's desk together, where his old dinosaur of a computer sits. Josuke plops down in Mr. Jonathan's chair and shakes the mouse. The old machine whirs before the screen lights up. A picture of a Great Dane greets us. It's Danny! His mouth opened in one of those cute doggy smiles and his big pink tongue lolling out. In the center of the screen is an empty bar asking for the password. Oh. Oh. I didn't think this far. Me neither. We stare blankly at the screen, the little blinking cursor seeming to taunt our predicament. Try password. I lean around Josuke and tap out the word password before hitting enter. Wrong password. Try password one. I do, and it doesn't work either. Well, damn. Damn, indeed. We stare at the computer long enough for it to go to sleep. So, what now? I guess we admit defeat. Josuke groans sadly. Goodbye, sunny beach trip. I put a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Who needs a beach trip to have fun? Let all those losers run around and get sunburned and sand in their asses. We can have a way better time without them. Josuke's quiet for a few beats of silence. We? What, you think I'd go to the break without my best friend? Fat chance. Josuke gets up from the chair and surprises me with a hug. It lasts no more than a few seconds, but damn if I've ever had a hug better in my life. Sorry. My alarm just went off. My bad. He pulls back, his face bright and happy. What? What was that for? Don't get me wrong, I appreciated it. I'm glad it's so dark in the room because I can feel my face is on fire. I just... I appreciate everything you do for me. You're kind of amazing, you know. I punch his arm because I don't know what to say to that. You're so damn sappy, Josuke. Josuke laughs. All of the sap is entirely your fault. He sighs happily and looks to the door. I guess we should get going. 
I nod and we leave the room, closing and locking the door behind us. The atmosphere shifts back into something dangerous as we start down the hallway. We make it quite a ways down when I hear something. Did you hear that? I nod and we both freeze to hear what it is. There's a song playing from another room. It's piano? That means it's Dio, right? If I remember correctly, Dio played the piano. I'm like 70% sure he played the piano. I'm so sure of this. Oh my god. As if summoned by my thoughts, a door opens further down the hallway. It feels like my brain is short-circuiting and I'm standing there like a deer in the headlights. Bald bitch, quick, hide! I'm gonna hide with Josuke. I'm hiding with Josuke. I look around quickly. There's a shadowy nook where the lockers end. I grab Josuke's hand and rush to the spot. The area really isn't that big, and I'm not sure if both of us will fit. Oh, we're doing this! We're doing this trope then! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Okay, okay. I was not emotionally prepared for this. Before I can panic, Josuke pushes me against the wall before pressing himself against me. Both of us grow completely still as we listen. Why is RuPaul in the flesh strutting down in the flesh strutting down this hallway? Like what? It's the unmistakable sound of heels on linoleum. Oh, does that mean it's Miss Lisa Lisa? Click. Oh god, whoever it is, they're getting closer. I feel Josuke's chest hitch as he fights to hold his breath. Stay. We're gonna stay. We're gonna stay. The footsteps stop. It's like the person is standing only a foot away. My heart is pounding so hard that I can feel it in my eardrums. God, I need to breathe. The person is going away! Josuke and I are tense against each other as we listen to the slow, methodical footsteps slowly retreat. A door closes. We hold it in for a few more seconds before gasping for breath. Holy shit. His voice is ragged and low with relief. His words breathed out hotly against my face. Ooh. Chill. Chill, MC. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. The intimacy of, ma of it makes me realize. Oh, wow. We're like really pressed up against each other. Josuke is a sturdy boy, and I can feel all of his weight completely relaxed on top of me. If it were anywhere else, anyone else, I'd probably tell him to get the hell off. We both catch our breath seemingly at the same time. Josuke looks down at me, and we share a look. It's equal parts relieved, giddy, and tender. I see his lips part. Is he about to say something? Is he about to do something? Josuke suddenly looks unsure and pulls away. We better get out of here. I nod, a little disappointed. We stand at the school gates together, knowing it's time for us to part, but not quite ready. That was fun. Jessica grins from under his mask. Hell yeah, it was. I'm sorry it didn't work out as planned. Josuke shakes his head in the air, as if batting away my apology. Honestly, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. I got to spend a lot of time with you doing something I never would have done. The night's still young. We could rob a few convenience stores. <laughs> we're just gonna go out and rob a bunch of stuff together since we're already dressed for it. <laughs> Josuke laughs. I'll take a quick rain check. I think my heart's had enough of a workout tonight. We grin at each other, but I notice Josuke's smile slip into something a little nervous. Well, I mean, he takes a deep breath and swoops in and pecks, a, a gives a quick, oh my god, I can't even read. <sighs> and swoops in and pecks a kiss quickly on my cheek. Well, I'm not sure if it can be considered a kiss with a thing over his mouth. Oh, it's okay if he's wearing a mask. It still counts as a kiss. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, now I've had enough of a workout. A shocked second passes between us before Josuke bolts. S see you tomorrow. 
I watch her see high tails down the salon. He's just like, Mwah, see ya, and just sprints away. No, no respect, respect. That that's something I would do. Oh, mad respect for my man. As I begin my way home, my footsteps feel light, as if I might just float away. I have no idea what that just said. Studying is definitely not my thing. This is this is Josuke's room. What? Okay, whatever. Even still, I'm right next to Josuke, reading over previous lessons and making questions for us to both quiz each other on. Wait, oh, are we at his house studying? Okay. Josuke's in the zone too, mumbling to himself and jotting lots of things down in his notebook. It's not as exciting as going to the beach, but in my opinion, it's way better. Just me and Josuke quietly spending the afternoon together. Ugh. He stands up and jogs in place for a few seconds, a steady technique I've used countless times when drowsiness threatens to take me. I hop up and join him. We're making pretty good progress. The great academic minds are smiling at us from the heavens. Josuke kisses his fingers and points them at the ceiling. This one's for you, Isaac Newton. <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> that was so weird. We high five and settle back down at the table. We quickly get back into our groove of comfortable silence. After a few minutes, I decide that I'm done making literature flashcards and want to move on to math. Oh, look at us just doing work together. I look up to ask Josuke to hand me the textbook, but I stop. He's so absorbed with his studying that he doesn't notice me staring. Not for the first time. I think just how pretty Josuke is. No, pretty is too mild of a word. Gorgeous, phenomenal, outstanding, in every field as a human being. Yeah, that's more accurate. His brows furrow as he chews on the tip of his pen and reads over a passage. I smile. A few months ago, I felt like my high school life was over, but Josuke swooped in and made this year the best one I've ever had. Hope that there's many years of hanging out and adventures ahead of us. Thanks for being my friend. Huh? I didn't necessarily mean to say that out loud, but it doesn't really matter. I want him to know how damn grateful I am for the past few months. You heard me, punk. What's with the sappy shit? Damn, let a bitch be sappy sometimes. He laughs and shakes his head. Well, however happy you are to be my friend, multiply that by a thousand. That's how happy I am to be your friend. Wow, who's the sappy one now? I never claimed I wasn't. Touche. Jessica looks back at his textbook, but he definitely seems distracted. A little more time passes before he gets my attention. Bulk bitch? Yeah? I really like you. I'm speechless. Partially because I know what he means by like, but mostly because I feel the exact same way. Josuke's face goes pale when he hops up from the table. I'm gonna go get something to drink. Do you, do you want something to drink? He nods his head to himself. Y yeah, drink. I'll go get us drinks. Josuke zooms away and I'm left a blushing mess at the table. I hope he didn't think my silence was me declining his feelings. When he comes back, I'll tell him. I can't believe I'm gonna do this. I can't believe that Josuke feels the same way. I bury my face in my hands as a smile hard enough to make my face hurt. What the hell? I look up just as Josuke storms into the room. What the hell is that in the backyard? I hop up from the table. Did you go outside? I just needed a breather. What the hell? Well, it looks like the cat's out of the bag. Surprise! Josuke paces around the room. How did you... When did you... I've been talking with your mom. Remember when she sent you out this afternoon for some milk? We just bought milk yesterday. I thought that was weird. Well, she sent you away so we could both set it up for you. Are you serious? I was going to show you when we were done studying. Okay, first off, 
Thank you, like, so much. Secondly, you put so much time and effort into this. What do you say we wrap up studying for the day? I'm sure even Isaac Newton took time to have fun. He rum is his dad there? Like, like what, did, what did we get him? He rummages in his dresser and pulls out a pair of swimming trunks. Oh, we got him a pool, didn't we? Oh. I'm going to go get dressed. You are amazing. I settle down in a beach chair, send glasses on, and a Capri Sun in hand. Jessica comes out not long afterwards. This one's for you, Isaac Newton! What? Cannonball! Before I can stop him, he hops into the little kiddie pool, making most of the water slosh out. It wasn't exactly a cannonball, considering there's maybe half a foot of water in it. But I'm sure Isaac Newton is up in heaven, thumbs upping him. He settles down in a lounging position before looking over at me. How's my hair? I laugh and toss him a Capri Sun. It's as killer as ever. Uh, this is just what I need. Look at his swim shorts. Oh, and there's a little candle and a towel. Aww. Aw, oh, this is just what I needed. He really went out all. You really went all out, bald bitch. The beach experience you deserve. No screaming children. No asshole seagulls. Just you and me. I take a long slurp out of my Capri Sun, remembering what I told myself in Josuke's bedroom. But the courage I worked up earlier has dwindled. It feels like the moment to confess has passed. I should have done it earlier when I had the chance. You can still do it. Go ahead. I am the Lord of Fools! Even as I'm lamenting my poor use of timing, I'm watching Josuke enjoy the little scene I put together for him. It's not much. A few tiki torches, a few scattered shells, but he looks so damn happy. It makes my heart clench and my throat feel tight. Either I'm having a heart attack or I'm experiencing love. Oh, we gotta tell him! We gotta tell him! I open my mouth, but no words come out. Just a pitiful little squeak. Gosh, this is hard. You okay? I jump up as I realize Josuke's been watching me. You look like you're in pain or something. I... I jump up from my chair. What? Hold on, does it go any other way? Does it go any other way if I choose anything else? Tell him. Okay, no, it, it's the same either way. Okay. Oh, no. I need to get more shells. There's not enough. Not nearly enough. Flustered at my own cowardice, I start heading towards the house. I just need a second to collect my thoughts, a second to calm my nerves. Bald bitch. My feet have betrayed me. I'm on the ground, too embarrassed to get up. What a mess. I hear water slosh around, and then Josuke's in front of me. Oh! 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 Are you okay? I like you two. Huh? What you said earlier. I like you too. R really? He looks at me with wonder, like he doesn't believe that he could be so lucky. I wonder if I look the same way? He brings my face closer. Can I... I'm honestly so lost looking at his face that I don't get what he's asking. Can you what? Kiss you. Oh! I grin at him. Bring it on. Good end! Yeah! We did it! Woo! Let's go! Oh my god! That was awesome! I loved that! Oh my god! I absolutely loved that! Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Wait. Oh, that's that's no way to that's no way to end. Okay. You know what? <laughs> you know I will just end it there actually. Oh, I don't have anything to show you guys. Oh, I would if I did though. That was a really good stream. I loved that. That was, that was just adorable. Uh, I loved it, and thank you for watching it with me. 
I had a fantastic time. It went on much longer than I thought it would, but it was cute and it was worth it. Every part of it was worth it. All right. Bye.